When you think of going to the desert, you picture sand, lots of it. You picture cactuses and camels, occasionally a dead tree. What you probably don't expect is trash, and lots of it. Want to find out why waste is being dumped and burned in the Sahara Desert? How a bunch of goofballs, like ourselves, turn this empty space into a plastic recycling facility? How we make this out of this? And how we empower the local people to do so? Well, stick around for this one. We are here in the Sahara Desert, near a town called Tinduf. Why? Good question. Well, some pretty intense stuff has been going on here since 1973. Stuff you've probably never heard about. At least, we didn't. Not until we answer the United Nations call for helping with the plastic waste problem in the area. You should definitely read into what's going on here. But long story short, over 100,000 people live in refugee camps in the middle of freaking sand. Thousands of miles of sand in all directions. With here and there some camels. We were right about that. Since it's in the middle of the desert, the refugees, which are called Sahari, rely almost completely on humanitarian aid to get their drinking water, food, building materials, and clothes. Right. <laughs> it's easy to walk. This comes with a lot of waste. And it's not like there's a garbage truck just going around picking up waste containers. Well, actually there is. Uh, today we're following the trucks in the camps, how they pick up the waste. But after the waste is picked up in the camps, it's driven off into the Sahara Desert, dumped and burned. Sounds rough, but what else is there to do? Yeah, it's just not ideal. And of course, it can't stay here even when it burns. It will fly around anyway. The waste pickers here, they, they are proud of their job. That's, that's a good thing. But they also, as they also see as a solution, they see just more collections, but actually they could transform it into stuff. So that's really something where uh, there can be a lot of work done that they actually see it's valuable and they can do something out of it. So yeah, let's see, let's show them the, the value. <laughs> so what do we mean by that? How could this waste be of any value? So we're in Algeria and we're in a refugee camp in Algeria. Okay, okay, one more. We're in a refugee camp in Algeria and we're setting up this plastic recycling workspace with precious plastic. Okay, that's good, I think. So yeah, here will be the two sorting station. A storage area will be in between the washing and the shredder. We just want to give you an introduction of what precious plastic is. After a long week of setting up the workspace, we were ready to start teaching and working with the locals, recycling plastic into new products. Now, with all these machines, you can create a lot of things with plastic. Meet Salamu, born and raised in one of the refugee camps. <laughs> Plastic. 
في الطريقة لهذا المصنع يعني أكيد أكيد يعني مع مولانا اللي هي ساعد في في مفايات يعني فو فو يعني هذيك هي تقريبا ذاك هو الحافز الرسمي أصلا الحافز الرسمي وعنا تساعد الناس باش ما يضرها البلاستيك Now you know why we do this. Maybe it's time to show you how we do this. Remember that truck going around? Well, instead of dumping the waste here, you can dump it here. This could be PS. The team then sorts the plastic into types of plastic. Then they do some more sorting, and then they throw it into this scary looking thing which compresses it into a bale. which you can sell for roughly 10 euros. Or, after sorting, they shred the plastic into tiny pieces that are then easier to store and work with. They wash it. They dry it. They measure it. They throw it into this hopper. And then this extrusion machine spits out some sort of hot plastic sausage from which they can make all sorts of creations. Or, after sorting, shredding, washing, drying, and weighing, they throw the shredded plastic on a big metal sheet. Carefully, they lay it out into whatever pattern and color their creativity can come up with. They load it into the sheet press machine, wait for 45 minutes, and out comes a true piece of art. And if that wasn't cool enough, they actually use these beautiful looking sheets to make furniture. We, we found this cool bench in a, in a school, and it was broken, and now we're replacing the wood that was also broken by like plastic sheets and plastic beams. Really, it's just one example of the endless possibilities in which they can now recycle plastic waste into new products. In this workspace, we will recycle uh, three main types of plastic that are called HDPE. Realistically, it will take time for Salamu, his family, and all the other refugees to be able to go back to their homes. While we can't do much to speed that up, we can help them leave as little traces and waste behind in the desert from this decades-long humanitarian crisis. Now Salamu and his friends know how to turn waste into value. They have all the machines and knowledge to do it, making sure there's a circular economy around plastic in their refugee camp and keeping waste out of the desert. Make sure to support them and follow their progress. Links in the description below. And if you too want to start recycling plastic, check out preciousplastic.com and learn how to get started.